get ready to start the recording. All right, we're getting ready to go into the hour. After the next station ID, you'll be up. Right after this. All right. Good evening, everyone. You are listening to the Lene Gray Show. This is Lene Gray, and I have a, a really amazing show for everyone tonight. I'm happy to have my 13-year-old A.D. here as my uh, special guest DJ. You want to say hi? Hello. <laughs> uh, he's he's gun shy. He's he's uh, very shy. Um, I have a special guest tonight. His name is Ms., uh, Marcus Klein. He is. Uh, the owner operator of the Kruma International Academy, and um, he's doing amazing things with youth, and it's almost like homeschooled youth. Uh, he will be calling in around ten minutes into the hour at eight ten. So um, while we're waiting on him to call in, I I'm, I'm hearing a feedback. Is that me? Oh, that's me. Wait oh, a minute. Yeah, Let me turn the. Up. I was, I was like, where is that feedback good. coming from? <laughs> I forgot to turn. I'm sorry, y'all. I forgot to turn down my uh, my volume on my phone. But anyway, let me go back and say we will have our special guest as Marcus Klein. Uh, he is the owner-operator at uh, Kruma International Academy. He will explain more to you about what it, what it is. Um, I was thoroughly impressed. You all know that I'm very much a... Um, an academic parent. I love academics. I love for children to be extremely intelligent. Mr. A.D. knows that. He knows how I am about um, intelligence and and education. Um, Before we have nine minutes before Mr. Klein uh, comes in. So I have some announcements that I would like to make. We're going to make some church announcements. We should have bought a a tambourine or something. Um, But we're going to make the church announcements, y'all. Be college prep has a pop-up on May 5th, 2018, from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. They will provide lunch. It will be at the Boys and Girls Club on 3831 East 43rd Street. Um, This is the opportunity for anyone from college sophomore through senior to come in. And what they're doing is it's an amazing program that was developed by my amazing daughter, Jaqueta. I told you all that I'm really big on education. And um, this is part of her college prep program, get children ready to go to school. Um, it, they will build a college and the winning uh, team that the winning groups, the winning group, huh, not S, that builds the college that everyone likes and agrees upon, they get special prize. And the children are also able to win a $25 gift card. We also have coming up, y'all don't want to miss this. I think I might have to miss it because I think one of my kids have a game or something. Hopefully not. But uh, the second annual Music and More Foundation Poetry Awards are Sunday, April 29th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And you can get those tickets available at Eventbrite. And you can also contact Mr. Terrence Williams to find out more. And on Saturday, May 12th, 2018, between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m., the Lenexa Sunflower Poetry Slam. You want to contact Sherry Hall for more information. Uh, My 15-year-old, who's currently at a baseball game, participated in that, and he came in third, and it is an amazing, all poets need to sign up for this. You're going to love it. Uh, Wednesday, April 25th, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., Sherry Hall is also hosting a community writing performance workshop at the Uptown Bar, Uptown Arts Bar at 3611 Broadway, Kansas City, Missouri, 64111. Also, Friday, April 27th, 
um, between 6.30 to 8 o'clock p.m. It will be Artist Talk with Warren and Natasha. Check your um, Facebook, uh, check your Facebook uh, events for that information. Here's one that I really like. Uh, KCMO Land Bank is offering $100 houses to the public to public employees. You must pass a back, background check, have no delinquent property taxes, have access to $8,500 for repair, and little do a lot of people know, Land Bank can help you with that. Um, offer is for KCMO city workers, KCPD Jackson County employees, and employees of all school districts that are within the Kansas City Public Schools boundaries. I want to give a huge congratulations to my son's um, duo uh, group, uh, R&B Soul Duo Group. Um, he is the second half of Soul Revival, and they just won the groundbreaking People's Choice Award for the best soul group duo of 2017. So everybody, let's give it up for Soul Revival. And the best way to give it up for Soul Revival is to go buy their music and uh, get them played on the radio. I'm going to be premiering their new song um, with Church Boy uh, today on break. Um, I just sent it through. So it'll probably be later in the show when it gets premiered. Also, I wanted to announce that males to men, all parents need to look at, especially single moms who their sons have no male representation or no positive male representation. Your sons should be in males to men. Go to males to men, M-A-L-E-S-T-O-M-E-N.com. Males to men is the rights of passage program. And, um, right, males to men is the rights of passage program and manhood development organization based in Kansas City, Missouri with one purpose in mind to raise strong, conscious, productive men and reestablish accountability, accountability leadership in the community. Now, um, I'm not sure if you all remember that I mentioned the um, apprenticeship program. Um, I wanted to make sure I got this information out to you all, just in case you wanted to find it. Just hit replay on the video, and, and the information is the Builders Association Apprenticeship Program, Ramond Holt, is the contact person, R-O-M-O-N-D-H-O-L-T. Um, it is the A-G-C-K-C chapter. Um, the telephone number he can be reached at is 816-595-4145. And you can just simply go down to the building. And I think you have to go down with your GED, your Social Security card, and your driver's license. But contact him to make sure what you're supposed to have. Uh, the location is 105 West 12th Avenue, North Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. And like I said, um, that is all for the church announcement, y'all. Um, I want to make sure that um, we give Mr. Klein enough time to talk about you all, you have to go to his page and see these amazing videos that he's putting up of young children. Now, y'all know that I, I, I have this thing with I decide I want to do something, and then if I don't like somebody's attitude, I quit. I teach my, I tell my kids I'm a <laughs> professional quitter. <laughs> so, but I'm gonna keep doing this radio show because I like this, and it's just me, so I don't have to worry about not like if I don't like my own attitude, I can just go home, take a nap, go to bed, I'll be all right. But um. I did go to, I was a med student, a chemistry major, and I had posted a video years ago about my now 15-year-old reading, and I had shared it. I think it was either last year or the year before last. And because I shared that video, Facebook found Mr. Klein and pulled up his video. And it was a video of young children going over medical terms and um, medical terminology. And these were little babies, little bitty babies. And they could rattle it off. They could tell you what it was. If, if he called out the definition, they could tell you the word. It was amazing. So I said, as my first special guest, because I've had a lot of parents ask me about homeschooling, because I did homeschool all of my kids. If 
even like Aiden's been in school since preschool, but rock and learn R O C K the letter N L E A R N dot com. Rock and learn dot com has been Aiden's homeschool before he was in preschool. So we are going to get the show together right now. Uh, hopefully that is Mr. Klein calling in so we yes. can speak with him more yeah, because I'm excited for everyone okay, to get to check. know this program oh, that he is doing. And if you're, please invite other people to listen because you do not want to miss this interview. Hello, Marcus. Are you there? I am wonderful. And you? I wanted to speak with you more because I'm highly impressed with your, it's called the Nakuma International Academy. Oh, you have four schools. What are the other ones? We have a school of literacy, which is a preschool, a Freedom Home Academy, which is our flagship school, grades one through four. And then we have a nursery as well, a nursery school with uh, African genius. Oh, that is amazing. So uh, let, let, let's go back. Can you please tell the people what each of your schools, um, what you do, and explain to our listeners about your schools? You broke up a little. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Can you please so tell the people about the schools? Uh-huh, and I explain do. to them about your schools, what you do. Um, and and we'll, we'll, I'll just let you flow with it on, on okay. telling everyone no about what you do. Okay. And you can go ahead. No. Can you hear me? You're going in and out. Okay. He said I'm going in and out. Is that me or you? I think that might be you because we can hear you clearly. Okay. I'm going to move around here. There it is. Yeah. I would like to say while he's getting set up, uh, Marcus Klein is in Chicago, Illinois. So I know I have some listeners in Chicago. So, and he uh, he's he has a summer program that we'll be addressing once he's ready um, to talk about. And they take students from out of state as well for the summer program. Uh, let me know when you're ready, Marcus. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, this is uh this is Marcus Klein. I'm the uh, director and owner, co-owner of Freedom Home Academy in Chicago, Illinois, which is a uh, Af African-centered private school in here in Chicago, as well as uh, our high school, which is uh, in Kuma International Academy, where we have a pre-law, pre-engineering, uh, entrepreneurship, and a pre-med program for 5th and 12th graders. We also have a preschool called School of Literacy, and we have a nursery school, which is uh, brand new, six months old in total. We've been operating for 12 years um, here in Chicago. We also have an Atlanta school site at Fort June, which will have the same uh, criteria. And if anyone is interested, we have um, quite a few websites. But main website is uh, F-H-A-I-N-T-L, and that's Freedom Home Academy International org. And you can reach us either there or at uh, Facebook, Freedom Home Academy. Um, same with uh, Instagram. Awesome. I would like to go back to um, ask you because I, I preparing for the interview, I did look up your um, your bio and I see that you studied at Rutgers University Business Management and you studied management at Oakwood University. Uh, what inspired you to develop these? Because I'm a, I'm a proponent for homeschool. I believe that parents can really instill their values and their morals and their beliefs while properly educating our, our children and preparing them um, to be, you know, productive and successful global citizens. Because that's something that school doesn't teach, is teach our students how to be global citizens. Um, Correct. Yeah. What inspired you to not only develop the programs, develop them in African-centered, which is amazing because I I'm a big proponent of African-centered education, but also okay. take it to the level that you've taken it to. Right, great, great question. So we could, we could take it back a little bit. I know you mentioned Rutgers. So I came out of Rutgers in 93, um, studied history on the Ivan Van Sertima there. So being in that type of environment, I learned, of course, knowledge of self and the need to 
not only just learn who I was, but also to teach it. So I met my wife in 94 after moving to Chicago. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. I went to Oakwood College first, HBCU down in Huntsville, Alabama, and wound up in New Jersey. But um, after acquiring knowledge of, of culture and history, I decided to start a magazine. So I published a magazine out of Chicago for a little over 12 years called Frontline Magazine. So I did that uh, with the help of um, being taught research by uh, Steve Coakley. Uh, I was Steve who taught me um, how to research and how to develop critical analysis skills. Um, after after the 90s, we were moving to the 2000s, I had a son. So my wife and I, we decided to, um, due to the lack of um, what we consider um, excellent and rigorous work for the babies, we decided to develop our own rigorous program, and we homeschooled. So we started homeschool in our basement in 2007 um, with the help of the community, of course. Um, and after 2007, uh, our son, which is three three years old then, after developing a strong program, we, uh, we started to get other students. Uh, my son was reading at two. Uh, we gave him a flashcard method, which is a method to kind of piecemeal together from off the internet and we decided that um, we needed 16 courses. 16 courses would give us a nice a nice round figure for um, meet state requirements, national requirements, as well as our requirements, which is <laughs> much higher than the state. So after developing a program uh, in 2007, we opened the school up in 2008, uh, with my son, of course, being the first student. From there, we moved to uh, a little over 32 students wow. <laughs> in our home. So we went from 32 there, we moved out, got another facility, went from 50 students and moved to a church. By 2010, we had a, a, a larger space and we had a little over 60 students. So we started a second school, which was a school of literacy because we had found out that daycare centers uh, for us, from what we saw, were destroying the ability of our African genius to uh, yes. television, yes. Um, a lot of free play, mm -hmm. um, no actual structure for uh, one, phonics, two, mathematics, and three, reading. So I was developing a system for the preschool students that uh, actually became a feeder for Freedom Home Academy, which, of course, is uh, first grade through fourth grade. So by this time, my son is now, uh, I think he's uh, 10 at this point. Mm -hmm. About to graduate from eighth grade, so I decided um, the high school after looking at the high school. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on for a second, Mr. Klein. You said he was ten, about to graduate from the eighth grade. Yes. Yeah, Amazing. But, but, yeah, I'm sorry. Not, Go ahead. Yeah, but not just him. I had a I had a whole group because remember uh, we started with six. Right. So six right. were our original. We have an original six, and okay. those six now are. Um, uh, about to graduate from high school, they're fourteen. My son just turned turned fourteen um, a month a month ago. So they, with the accelerated program, the uh, one of the hallmarks of the program is repetition, duration, and frequency. Yes. So we have an extended day. Um, you know that pre med is, mm -hmm. is kind of like a it's a hook. You know to bring parents in, and of course with the um, the doctor on staff. She administers the pre med. I'm not a doctor, so I can't administer that. But right. we just bring in contractual uh, instructors um, to teach the specifics of our program and our methodology. And we're able to um, um, offer an accelerated and very rigorous program four days from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, the high school is attached to uh, a dual enrollment program at DePaul University. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the students, um, they spend half the day at DePaul. Then it's been the other half at the high school doing their, um, their pre-med, their pre-engineering, their pre-law curriculum. Awesome. Their so when they program. when they go into, once they graduate, graduate high school, they're going into college with college credits. That's something that I am a big proponent of because my daughter graduated high school with 28 college credits, and it made it so much more easier for her to get a lot of scholarships. Uh, we yeah. didn't pay anything for her college at all. And so... That is amazing that you're not only are your students graduating high school at 14, but they're graduating with college credits. And I don't know if you heard me before the uh, the show came on, but I was pre-med. And as an adult to see children are able to recite 
and not only just recite, but watching what you did with them, they were able to go ahead and give you the information, basically teach you. We, I was always taught, if you can teach it to somebody, you know it. And they were able to teach you the information that you taught them that we paid money to learn. That's right. amazing. I'm going to let you go ahead and finish, though. I'm sorry. Well, no, well, no you, you're right. But see, what, what, what we're finding is the critical analysis piece is lacking. So the recitation is very easy, you know, to, to instruct. Like we can get them to recall. I can get them to recall that. I don't know if you saw any videos and the yes. audience seen the videos. Yes, but I've seen them all. At two and three, you know, they're doing two and three languages because mm -hmm. they, they can recite. They, the memorization is, again, based on repetition, duration, and frequency. So as we administer this methodology, um, we have to learn also that our children, um, they learn differently, um, mm -hmm. whether, whether it be auditory, um, kinesthetic, or visual. So right. um, not being in, a, in a, um, a traditional system, we can individually find out how that child learns, how he learns effectively. Mm -hmm. So by teaching to the child as opposed to teaching in a, in a broader format, um, we can, we can kind of dissect um, what we want into the child and, and then see um, through a critical analysis if that child actually understands what he's, what he's reading and whether it be math, physics, um, um, uh, bio, biochemistry or whatever the course is, they have to be able to understand the deeper meaning. Behind theory, we have to go into application. So that's why labs, labs are very important, um, particularly yes. with our children. Because, yes. again, you know, we, a lot of us are kinesthetic learners um, due to, you know, the maps of the brain and how we digest information. And um, uh, some <laughs> mis misdiagnosed that with um, ADHD. And, right. And, that you know, that was that a, nature, a but, subject um, that we were talking about this week. Absolutely. I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit. I I'm said sorry. that was a subject that came up on Facebook this week, uh, the misdiagnosis of our oh, children AD, ADHD. with ADHD. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's a... Um, I tell people yes, I feel like they that, diagnose that's show, them. That's a show within itself. Yeah, my, but, my you know, take is they diagnose them and then they medicate the genius out of them. To just turn oh, yeah, them into zombies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Medication, but you know, um, Big Pharma makes, makes, oh, yeah, <laughs> makes we, plenty of money <laughs> off that. Absolutely. But, but in itself, we have to, you know, even beyond, you know, us building a school um, for academics, the school has to be also an incubator for children to come out and also teach, like you mentioned, really have to teach, you know, what they learn even at a younger even at a younger age. You know, right. They can they can understand and then they can they can teach. So if we're talking about um, drugs and medication, we have to, you know, teach the children you know, why, you know, why the medical establishment is what it is today. So um, I think another thing that separates us from a lot of different schools is we have a we have a knowledge of the system. We know how the system works, we know why it works and we're not um, handcuffed. Uh, into uh, you know teaching children only the mainstream. We're independent, so we can do a lot of things that regular systems and methodologies can't. You know, uh, having awesome. a yes. having a research background and you know been able to uh, you know I was I was talking to Steve Coakley, one of the greatest researchers you know I've been around that I've seen. You know, he taught me how to do particular things with with the book and <laughs> with with the help of libraries now that you know I can teach children. Um, you know, how mechanisms control, you know, economies and control societies. Absolutely. And all that's important because yes, now they can, you know, kind of understand um, the why, the why and the who, naming those names. So, um, yeah, but, but, but the school is, you know, dedicated to creating new African children, um, mm. not just um, to go out and go to college, but, you know, sometimes there's, there has to be a healthy alternative to college. Absolutely. You know, that has to be a trade. You know, and it has to be an entrepreneurship. Absolutely. So we have to teach children, you know, to create their jobs as opposed to going out and, and begging for and, one. Uh, and looking for one. Mm -hmm. So school is, as you know, you know, the school is more than just academics. You know, yeah. it's a social component for our community as well. Yeah. And so I, I, I like, we're gonna, I'm going to piggyback off of what you said, where um, you're, you're training the children to not, my thing is, and the reason why I really like African-centered um, education is because it builds up a confidence in children. Um, I often use this example. We have a place here in Kansas City called Worlds of Fun. And if you go to Worlds of Fun during the summertime and you see the, the children who have the confidence of their culture, and then you see the children whose parents took them 
and ran them the um, the African children who's who's Afri- I call them call us Africans in America, um, mm-hmm. who whose parents took them and ran them to suburban schools. They have a different mm-hmm. walk. They have right. a different confidence. The the right. ones who are like my children who know who they are, who've been taught who they are, who who know that their history begins before slavery. They walk right. with their shoulders back and their heads held high. Yeah. And they walk when they walk in a pack, it to some people it could be intimidating, but they're not Absolutely. intimidating anyone. Absolutely. They're just confident. Right. It, to some people it could be intimidating, but they're not intimidating anyone. But then the ones right. who are walking with groups of other races, they're trying to they're lingering at the back, their shoulders are slumped, their heads yeah. are down, they're looking at a phone or something, they're not looking at anyone in the eye. And to right. me, that has, and I always tell people, they snatch the soul out of our children. Yeah, and Yeah, and I think, too, uh, yeah, they got something called a soul catcher chip, too. And that, yeah. <laughs> that we always, and, we always yeah, and, and I, and I went, when, and um, with my ex-husband, we were there, and he was like, you are always, you're a conspiracy theorist. And so then he had to literally, he looked at a young man, he said, hey, pick your head up. Because he noticed that that he's walking around with a group of, you know, non-minority, non-African kids, and this young man is shuffling his feet, his shoulders are slumped forward, and his head is down. And he looked at him, he had to, I mean, it caught him off guard, and he's like, hey, pick your head up. I said, now do but, you see what I mean? Well, well, well you know what? what? What you're saying is 100% correct and accurate. And on top of that, um, I don't know if you're, maybe your audience want to write these two programs down. These write are two this programs down, y'all. In, in, internationally. Um, uh, for summer summer enrichment, so that's um, uh, CDT Center for Talented Development dot Northwestern dot edu. Northwestern has um, I, I would say one of the, one of the better enrichment programs um, in the country. It's quite a few, but that's the one that we use. Uh, it's a three week program for um, sixth graders through high school, and they also get college credits. So um, it's three weeks, so they live on campus. They live, you know, in the dormitories at um, Northwestern and Evanston. And the other one is uh, University of Stanford. The University of Stanford has one as well. That's uh, epgy.edu. So I just bring those up because um, th- th- those are enrichment programs that are housed in different universities all over the country. So every year we take our students in the month of July, we take them to a different area. So we've done Harvard three years, we've done University of Miami, UCLA, Stanford. So we, we travel, right? Yeah. So every year we travel, and I always tell parents the story when I come back, there's always one African child, like every year for the last 10 years. We, we've documented it <laughs> every year. There's always one African child in the class. Mm-hmm. And you know it's not many of us in the class. But it's always one who calls himself a monkey, and he does mm-hmm. the monkey dance for whites and Asians in the classroom. It, it never fails. Like, wow. you know, it, it, it's always one. So the last six years, you know, we, we uh, my son, myself, and a couple other students, you know, we, we try to educate, you know, the young African and, and let, let him know that, look, you know, <laughs> this is where you come from. Yes. You're, you came from kings and queens. Yes. You know, you have revolutionaries in your blood. These are things that you shouldn't practice in front of, not just in front of Europeans, but in front of anyone. anyone. So right. that same that same thing occurs every year, because what the schools do when we are the only ones, and he, you know, he's not from, they're not from that city. They come from other cities like we do, mm-hmm. so they go back um, to their schools at home and they practice the same type of um, demoralizing behavior. Right. Because why Europeans want that? Europeans feel safe around children, other children, European children feel safe around African children who are non-threatening. Right. So now that young male who's 12, 13, 11, he has to be funny. He has to demoralize himself subconsciously and consciously so they can feel safe around him. Right. Why? Because he has no uh, uh, cooperative component around him that's going to help him. He's mainly by himself. Right. So when he comes out to any other school, whether it be Harvard or Stanford or whatever, he has to make other children white feel safe. And that's that's and and, and if you look at males coming up and a lot of maybe the audience, you know, won't feel comfortable at this though, but homo 
homosexuality among our community is on a rise. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the black young black males feel threatened. Mm -hmm. So whenever we feel threatened, we have to revert back to a safe environment to make Europeans feel safe. There's no other thing that makes a European feel safe than an emasculated young right, black male. Right, right. So they feel safe in that confine. But that's kind of that's kind of going on a different different path. But I just wanted to bring that example up because there's always a child. Absolutely, absolutely. The last eight years we've been going. There's always a child. We have who a, wants to be I have act a, like a monkey. Right. Every that is year. a shame. That is a an absolute shame. Um, I have a question from uh, Mr. Forrest Tyson. He said, does your program use technology to deliver the curriculum? We do. We do. We have a, uh, uh, and, it, and it, took, it took me a while to um, <laughs> to get on board with, with tech at the school. But, you know, I, I came around a lot of parents, you know, they, they kind of pressured me to do it. But, yes, we do. We have a coding class. We teach coding from um, the first grade all the way up to the 12th grade. Awesome. So they're coding, creating websites. Uh, we had a couple of students who created some apps awesome. last spring. So yeah, they, they're they're into um, technology at the school. You know, our students have computers. They leave them at the school, and you know, we supply them. With, we had a nice a nice donor who who donated uh, seventy five laptops for us uh, last spring. So yes, we do have technology at the school. I have um, several. I'm going down my questions. Um, Hold on for a second. I'm sorry. Um, I just saw a question that does your technology. Oh, okay. So someone is asking. So do you have? Do you know of any programs like yours that are anywhere close to the Kansas City area? Because I mean, you you sparked interest of just about all of my Kansas City listeners. And if you don't know of a program, when can we? Look forward to you bringing one here. <laughs> and where are you? Kansas We're in City, Kansas right? City, Missouri. Yes. Yeah, we have a. Um, I have a couple of sisters that I've been I've been working with. One of them is Sister Kansas. Joanna, right? Say it again. Joanna uh, Grace Farmer. Joanna Farmer. Right. Yes, yeah. I yeah. I am the graduate of one of her programs. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've been, but you know, it's uh, it, you know, it doesn't take a lot. You know, I always tell parents. Um, and, you know, individuals who are not parents who want to open up a school, african Center school, it doesn't take a lot financially. I know we sometimes we're under the impression that, um, just because we've been conditioned, that everything takes a lot of money, a lot of resources, but it takes more um, cooperation from a good five and six parents in, in any city to okay. actually develop a program and develop a school. You know, finding the space, we had a curriculum ready. Um, the curriculum works; it's replicable, so we can take it anywhere and um, get get the same results. So it doesn't take a lot. You know? Oh, that is Just awesome! Finding the space is the most challenging. That is truly awesome. I um, let me turn back. I, I printed out your flyer for your summer program, and um, oh, hold on, wrong flyer. Um, it's for your Freedom Medical Immersion Academy. Can yeah. you tell us more about that and any other summer sure. programs that you may have? Sure. So, um, you know, just like you just asked, and one of your uh, your your listeners asked, you know, when 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 are we going to be able to move? So, since we can't, we get a lot of suggestions. So, some parents they want to be able to travel for a weekend or and just visit the school. We have a lot of visitors they want to sit in and just watch, and and that's fine. You know, uh, we do that. So we just decided to have a program just for parents who are out of state uh -huh. so we decided to do a, um, an immersion program with medicine uh -huh. so we got um, some of our curriculum together and we decided to do a three-week program in june and during that three weeks those students who come from out of state we have some parents who are um, facilitating housing so they're going to stay <clears throat> in chicago and attend freedom home academy for three weeks so that that medical program would be um uh, bio, biomedicine, um, wow. uh, microbiology, dissection, physiology, and then they'll do the regular English, math, science, regular science, and a foreign language. And then they'll get um, free play, you know, basketball, um, you know, soccer, got a little flag football team. So it, it'll be fun as well. 
So that three weeks, uh, we only had a slot for 25. And that, that first session filled up in like four days. So we had had to add a, um, a June, a July session. So we added a second session. But I'm going to do a third session uh, with the pre-law program as well. So I'll make it um, pre-law too. I'm just trying to design that um, before May so I can put the flyer out. But, um, the, you know, you know, parents, it's, it's, it's a... Uh, it's, it's a, uh, I want to say hard. It's more like a challenge, mm -hmm. you know, to get uh, monies and resources for these particular programs for things that we need. Because you know, I'm not really good at asking for money. You know, right, I, I want. Right. I want Whenever we're givers, you aren't good. You want to give everything <laughs> away, but you can't because again, in order sorry, to keep i said when you're a giver we people like us are givers and you want to give the knowledge away but you can't you cannot sustain what you're trying to do you know, know. doing it for yeah. free so yeah <laughs> it, it, it's hard but you got to find a way to 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 say hey this is how right, much it costs you, and right. and we have to keep this going and and i tell a lot of people this is my secret that I, when I've had to ask parents for money, you catch them right before they get their taxes back. Right. <laughs> They're more willing, to, more willing to, to say, okay, well, let me give you half now, or I'll pay it down to 500 and I'll pay the last 500 over a little right. bit. Right. So, <laughs> I mean, it works every time. Hey, a lot of people don't want to adapt that. And a lot of people, you know, but, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, you all. I'm, I'm, I'm so intrigued. I want to go ahead and do our call letters because it's time for our station identification break. And so you are listening to KUAW, Knowledge, Understanding, and Wisdom, Kansas City's global community radio station. Um, you will not be able to get into the phone line right now, but you can email your question to KUAW985 at gmail.com. You can also uh, look on the web at K listen on the web at KUAW.org. If you're listening right now, you're possibly listening through KUAW on Facebook, KUAW LPFM. 985 or on the TuneIn app. So um, if you're on Facebook, go ahead. Uh, my um, audio engineer is reading your questions, so he'll bring them over to me because I'm still inviting people. I didn't know I had this many friends. Um, but if you have questions, please ask them because this is an amazing program. And I will say this, since um, uh, 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 about his summer program, um, people, if you heard what he said about this Freedom Medical Immersion, Immersion Academy program, this should make any parent, and it's open to students out of state, and he said he's going to do a pre-law one. You all should find the money to send your children because I'm going to look at the summer schedule and hope I can get their dad to agree to, send, to give up some of his parenting time to send my student, to send my children um, to this program because it is absolutely amazing. And when I tell you as an adult who went through a pre-med program, when you sit in the class and you realize that pre-med is basically the beginning of pre-med is everything you learn from kindergarten to senior year in high school or yeah. freshman year in college. And you're like, dang, I should have listened while I was sitting there in class. <laughs> And so right. for him right. to for him to give this to children and for him to teach this to children and they will be able. We had our two top students in our pre-med program in school in uh, UMKC, our two top students that threw the curve on everything. After a while, we just I was a chemistry major in pre-med and we were just like, you know what, don't even just study because we're not going to have a curve because they're going to blow it. And not only are they going to blow the curve. But they are going to get the extra points. These right. were two African children, Africans in America children. These yeah. were, and it was him and his girlfriend. And one day we went over there and the professor tells us all, anyone who, because this professor was tough. Everybody was, she was tenured. Everybody was trying to get her fired. She always started out with 300 students. By the time midterms came, she had half right. of that. 20. Yeah, and, and, and it wasn't even half of that. And so by the time finals came, she barely had 30 students sitting in there. Right. And so for yeah. midterms, we she said, if you want to know how to pass my test, go over. There's two people. She said, well, sorry to let you know there wasn't a curve. And I was like, oh, my goodness, then this test was a killer. 
<laughs> and I came out with like a B, a B, middle B, wasn't a B minus or B plus. And I was jumping for joy for that B. But Got she it. said, right, right. <laughs> she sent us over to go talk to the two students who we all said blew the curve. And I began to talk to the young man and his girlfriend. And I walked over and I said, and they told us they were boyfriend, girlfriend. They studied together. And I said, how did you ace this test? And he goes, the first thing you have to know is your learning style. And he goes on to, to teach me within like five to 10 minutes learning style. And he did it by asking me certain questions. And he said, you're a kinesthetic learner. You're not auditory. And he was like, but you're, you're the way you're studying is like your auditory learner. And I was yeah. like, wow. And this is from an 18 year old. And so then I'm like, okay, well, and he told me that he was kinesthetic. I said, okay. And when he started going off into making mobiles and, and making 3d, um, uh, I passed my chemistry cause he told me just go to the, uh, um, to the craft store and make 3d models. And right. he was like, by the That's time you, you right. he said, by the time you're done right. making 3D models and rewriting your notes, you're going to know it. And he was right. And you're doing this with our young people and you're giving them the African centered base. I tell people I went to Wendell Phillips in Kansas City and we were the very first unrecognized African centered program in Kansas City. But many of us came out and we were ve we are still very strong in who we are because of the people at Wendell Phillips. And we have uh, the National Black Archives here in Kansas City. Yeah. And Mr. Horace Peterson, he was a constant at our school. We knew yeah. Mr. Peterson, and we could recognize him before anyone. So the African Center piece does a lot. And a lot of people ask me, how are your children so confident? I tell them they know they're kings and queens. Yeah, one more time, how just they work. ask me how are my children so confident and so intelligent and so amazing. And I always tell them because they know they're kings and queens. Absolutely. They, they Absolutely. know who they are. And when yeah. you teach yeah. your when you right. teach them who they are, yeah. Coach. the rest of it just falls in place because they, they know what they can accomplish. That's right. That's right. And and I think, you know, on, on top of that. We know the African Center schools that, uh, and, and you know, the, the surprising thing too, the people in the community um, that come to the school, maybe they might see us on YouTube, or whatever. They're not really concerned with uh, the African Center part. You know, all they want to do is get their children to read. So that's awesome. like the that's that's the that's the line that's the line of demarcation almost. Yes. You know, yeah. If, if if you cross if you cross over, if you, that that's the line. As if you cross over, you know now you, ooh, now I'm the, I'm the, uh, the scary uh, <laughs> black person. I'm the scary black person that teach uh, black power and uh, how to be racist. It ain't even about that. You no, know, it's not. They believe that you know once you teach about uh, Malcolm X, you hate you hate white people. So, no. so, so sometimes <laughs> I tell people, people like, black pride is not white hate. <laughs> I say it all the time. Black pride is not white hate. <laughs> but um, exactly. I wanted to let my but, listeners but cool. know. I want cool. So we tell people, you know, uh, community that they know nothing about, like any of my politics. They never followed them. They never heard of the magazine before, and that's cool because they know that if we, if our school can teach their child who can't how to read, how to do, you know, advanced mathematics, you know, how to learn timetables, six, you know, all those things, and they never, they wind up coming to the school. They, they never ask any questions, you know. Uh, a lot of the, some of the elders, you know, they, they've really been pushing me to do educational classes for the adults. For the Absolutely. Parents, Absolutely. Which is important. It's, it's, it's very important. But, you know, I want to say I gave up on the adults because I, because I haven't. But, you know, a lot of my energy. Are, um, it's focused are, on the youth. I wanted yeah, to take a time yeah, yeah. Uh, to yeah, let. Don't get me wrong, though. That's, that's, that, that, that's, a, that's a very important aspect. It's almost imperative that the children go home. That's why boarding schools are important too, but that's another subject. Yeah. Because when they go home, you know, they, they fall back into the environment. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? That, that allowed them to, to slow down in the first place. I and wanted come to. Back to me at nine in the morning, I got to retool. All right. Over again. But, um, I want to uh, let our listeners know who I'm speaking with. I'm speaking with Mr. Marcus Klein. Uh, he's the owner operator at the Kruma International Academy, and it is 
an amazing African-centered homeschool program that he said is now daycare through uh, high school graduation. So, um, and uh, it, you said it's in Chicago and in Atlanta. You just opened up in Atlanta, correct? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, uh, we're about to uh, open that facility up in June. That is amazing. Um, I would ask anyone who's coming in late, you have to replay this show. It is a must. And I am. I was so excited when I first saw the first uh, video of yours, and it was a little classroom full of kids, and they were doing their medical terms. I was so excited because it's it's people don't understand, and I want to tell all of our African people, and um, we we have many many Africans in America who are indigenous indigenous tribes who they came from here because I am the descendant of a Samoan who was labeled as black because he was dark skinned. So, but I want you all to understand the importance of when a child knows who they are, when they know that they can accomplish anything that they set their mind to, it is easy to educate them and it's easy for them to retain. When they think of themselves in a high manner, when they have self-esteem about their skin and about their right. ancestors and about where they come from. Yeah. It, you can you can educate these children to the point where like Aiden, my uh, son AD who sit next to me, you know, they all of their teachers say they know math at such a high level. It's it's ridiculous. And I have a 15 year old and and he blows everybody's mind with what he knows and AD blows everybody's mind. And that's from my youngest to my oldest. But I, people don't understand, you can, Mr. Klein and his staff, they can teach your children everything that they need to know. But if they come home to you telling them that what they're saying is nonsense, oh, I don't believe in that, oh, that's not right, you are basically negating majority of the work that they're doing. These children need, our children need to believe in themselves. They need to know, if you go to UMKC School of Medicine and their School of Nursing, it is so incredibly lacking young Africans in America. Yeah. We have Africans. Yeah. We have a bunch of Africans. But we don't have the Africans who were born in America. My goddaughter's mother was the only African in America who went to and graduated from the UMKC School of Nursing in her years there. Mm. That shouldn't be. And so that's why I appreciate your program. And I'm asking everybody who's clicking in to please go back. If you don't rewatch any of my other episodes, there is a very specific reason why Mr. Klein was my very first special guest. There's a very specific reason why my 13 year old is sitting here because I wanted him to hear this. My other two are at a baseball game that they couldn't miss, but I wanted my 13 year old to hear this loud and clear from the voice of Mr. Klein, because this is someone who knows because he's educated. We have a lot of homeschool programs out here. Yeah. And unfortunately we have a lot of them that are not, I always say they're not measurable. They don't have the data to back up what they're teaching. And a lot of them teach a lot of uh, theory, but they cannot get the practicality of it. They cannot, like you said, when you said labs, labs made a believer out of me. Lab is make or break, especially in science. Right. When, right. You, when you start doing labs in science, that's when you realize where you need to study and what you need to study at. Right. That's where you realize if science is the area that you want to be in. Correct. So um, I want to give you a little bit of time. Um, I'm going to give you about three minutes because I'm going to let you off the air uh, probably about 52 minutes after. Um, okay. I'm going to give you time to let the listeners know what is ahead, what you have. Please clearly state how much you charge. Don't be afraid to ask how much do I charge? How much you charge for this homeschool? Let everybody know. 
So everybody okay. can get their money together. They can't get it this year. They y'all know <laughs> when the taxes come. Save that money. Get your kids in this program. Go ahead. You have the uh the the voice of the people. Hear okay. the people. Okay, that's great. So uh, I just want to say too, real quick. Um, uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins, he just gave us um, uh, his first scholarship award of five thousand dollars. Awesome! Congratulations. Uh, one, 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 what he considered one of the best African center programs um, in the country. So I wanted to give definitely um, a shout out to uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins for that. That was last month. So he coming to the school in May to uh, to do a presentation. So those those acknowledgments uh, from our peers, those are always. Um, revitalizing to us Absolutely. but we have a lot of things on tap like as far as the money um the, our tuition we have four schools so our tuition varies between 600 and uh, 500 dollars a month um so if anyone is interested they go into the site and then they'll be able to take a look at that we have an online program um, and a virtual school being planned for the summer so by the fall we you, students will be able to uh, to log in outside of um, city of Chicago all over the planet and be able to uh, um, to learn from five of our instructors at the same mm -hmm. time so we're going to have that lined up for the summer in addition to that uh, like we mentioned earlier those other summer programs for students who are coming to the actual brick and mortar school um, from out of state we're going to do a free law program as well as entrepreneurship uh, we have the program now where uh, our students are, you know, buying and selling. They trade in the foreign market with a Forex account. So they, they're being taught um, stock market and stock market analysis mm. as early as the third grade. So they're able to do that. Um, coming up, you know, more more languages. Uh, right now we have Igbo, Yoruba, Duna Khan, um, Mandarin, Kiswahili, um, French, and Spanish. Mm. So we want to we want to do uh, a program over in China as well, where we're going to be taking children from uh, America. And there's a program that I've been working with, with a brother from Chicago, he's in China now. So uh, also in Africa. So it's a lot of programs. You know, maybe if I was better prepared, I can like line it up. But we have quite a quite a bit because the programs that uh, we administer are very flexible. They're not rigid in that respect. So when things come new ideas come down we're able to you know implement there's no oversight for us you know we're no longer homeschool we're in the actual building so we're not in the home we still have home on our name because we started there but we're not a homeschool right we're right. actual um, private independent school um, through the North State Board of Education so what we're doing um, we found that with with more resources, we can open more schools. So before we do that, you know, we have to um, to galvanize the community in those cities, so they can understand exactly what we're doing. So scholarship programs and uh, resources, of course, we always need that. If okay. the listeners want to donate, they definitely can do that. We don't receive any outside funding from government. Uh, we're 100 percent tuition based, and we've been able to uh, we've been able to uh, do pretty well. We've been able to do pretty well. We we found that the school can be our main source of, of income, so we've been able to um, buy some real estate in a couple of cities, and in some years we'll be able to, you know, to put schools in those buildings. All so right. we've been able to do, you know, quite a bit because we have a lot of support from our community. You know, brothers and sisters are very supportive. You know, we have a strong parent base. They like what we're doing. They're proud of what we do. So definitely, they they contribute. Uh, monetarily to make sure we 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 are, are sustainable um please that, give that, your contact it. information um sure we have one minute left with you so i'm okay. asking that you give the people <laughs> no your contact information nope. okay so the contact that's a uh, freedom home academy international.org you know you go to search engine and pull up freedom home academy um our second school is school of literacy pull that up as well our phone number at the school is 773-891-3282 that's 773-891-3282 and all four of the schools are housed in one building so we're able to um to survey and like you mentioned earlier we, we also can you know map and um 
and quantify exactly what the children are doing in the program. So we have, we definitely keep records at, uh, for, for the students. Um, and and that's, that's basically it. You know, they can check us out on Facebook. You know, we Absolutely. do a lot of videos. We have over a thousand videos on our page. So you can see exactly what our students are doing. You know, we're not ventriloquists. So when you see the children, you know, doing things, that's not them. enjoying my voice, <laughs> they're actually doing it themselves. Two, three years old, as early as. So, yeah. I, I appreciate you having you. me on the show as well. I appreciate thank you me. accepting. And um, to all who were listening, this is Marcus Klein of the Freedom Home Academy. It's based out of Chicago, mm -hmm. Illinois. And they'll, like he said, they'll be opening their Atlanta-based school this summer. Kansas City. Yeah. We have all yeah. of these empty schools. I am going to challenge parents and our community members. We need to get together and get one of these buildings so we can get this program here. And yeah. uh, that's what yeah. I'm going to say. We have okay. all of these empty buildings, Kansas City. We need to be ready for them to just come in and implement their program. They don't have to worry about anything because we've covered the main part. They just come in and implement their curriculum with our students. Thank you so much, Mr. Klein, and I'm going to let you go. I truly appreciate you, and I look Thank to you. have you as a guest uh, once again, probably once school starts, uh, the regular school year starts in August. Anytime. You have, I, love, I love, love to do it. Thank you. All righty. Blessings and take care. Okay, you too. Thank you. All righty, listeners, you were just listening to Mr. Marcus Klein with the Freedom Home Academy .org. Um, any questions you have, go to that website. Any questions you have, go to his website. I am challenging Kansas City. Y'all know I'm about the kids. And y'all heard what he said academically. And we complain about the Kansas City School District and the academics. I was just talking to a parent who said she wanted to homeschool her child. His son is graduating high school at 14 with college credits. How many of us would love, how many of us would have paid to have that happen for our children? So, and he, and it starts now at preschool, I mean, uh, daycare age, all the way up to 12th grade year. I'm putting out the challenge for all in Kansas City who are listening, all in Memphis, Milwaukee, please, Detroit, Memphis, uh, Arizona, all the different places where people have told me that they are listening from. I am putting out the challenge for us to, I don't care what we have to do. We need to get his program global, not just in the United States, but global in order for our children to be globally competitive. They need to be taught in the manner that he is teaching them because what he's teaching them is for life and cannot be taken out of them. Look at me. I went to Wendell Phillips. I'm the product of Mr. Herman Gant and Mr. Horace Peterson, who taught us pride in who we were as black people. They gave us the um, the uh, the beer company who was on uh, Brooklyn. They used to give us uh, big posters every year of kings and queens of Africa. And Mr. Peterson used to tell us, look at that picture, because one of those is your ancestor. And so it lets you know that you were royal and you could accomplish anything. Uh, once again, we had as our guest, and I'm asking everyone who's listening, and if you know someone who didn't get to listen, please attach this link to your page and tell everyone to listen to it, especially people who have, because I got two grandbabies coming. So my grandbabies are going to be part of Freedom Home Academy. I'm just letting everybody know. Uh, but if you have young children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, whatever, uh, you need to invite people to listen to this show. And it is a blessing that this show was recorded on Facebook, that all you have to do is go back and press play. You only have to ask Lene for any information. Once Mr. Walker puts the video on the, ch on the channel, send people to the video, have them come back and press play. Because one thing our children need is confidence. More than education, they need confidence in who they are. And that's what African-centered education gives our children. My children are an exact example of that. They were taught who they are, and I teach my children. Black pride is not white hate. It's not. So when people want to label African-centered education as racist, as hate speech, it's not. I love you all. I hope you enjoyed the show. 
I want to thank Mr. Marcus Klein and the Freedom Home Academy for being our special guest tonight. You all have a wonderful evening and God bless you. And uh, uh, the, the song that they're bringing in before the close is Chocolate Love by my son and his uh, R&B soul duo, uh, Soul Revival, Derek Joliffe Culligan. I, Derek, I'm sorry for butchering your name. Love y'all. Take care. Yeah, like, you know what? Yeah. And I was busy writing and sending stuff, and I'm like, uh, yeah. uh -uh. You got this I'm going back and listening to it because I got two grandbabies. Yeah. You, you got to do the show. Go yeah. ahead and stop the video. But I didn't. They can't hear that on the